A tropical disturbance has a high chance of developing within, within the next few days, and that could affect coastal mid-Atlantic and southern New England. Good afternoon from your hurricane headquarters here in Tampa, Florida, for today's edition of Tracking the Tropics. My name is Daisy Ruth, and I'm joined by Tracking the Tropics meteorologist Amanda Holly. Amanda, before we talk about the possible development of what would be Say, Edward was a very short lived thing over the weekend, and I was actually on vacation, so it kind of looks like it was a fish storm to me. So, can you talk a little bit about that and what we can expect moving forward with this new disturbance? Sure. So, you know, over the past couple of weeks, the tropics have remained mostly quiet, with the exception of both Tropical Storm Dolly and Tropical Storm Edward. They were both fish storms. They both lasted about two and a half days, and they did not impact the United States, which is great news, but they did happen in case you were unaware. But Dolly and Edward moved off of, uh, they developed near Bermuda, just to the north of Bermuda, and kind of made their way off to the north north and the east and dissipated. So that's what we like to see. But now we're looking at the chance for uh, a more tropical development, a little closer to home off the mid-Atlantic states right now. Uh, this is something we've been watching for the past couple of days. Right now, we're looking at an area of low pressure that is moving off of the Carolina coastline. So this is a frontal boundary that has been stalled here. Area of low pressure developed along this frontal boundary, and that area of low pressure is moving off of the land into the water and it has a high chance of developing as it kind of parallels the coastline, the Atlantic coastline over the next few days. So the National Hurricane Center, they have been watching this. They actually just upped the chance for development of this system to 70% for the next two days and 70% for the next five days. But regardless of development here, the impacts are the same. It has, we have good confidence of where the center of this area of low pressure is going, whether it becomes tropical, subtropical, or doesn't become tropical at all. Uh, it's going to parallel the United States coastline. The mid-Atlantic states there in for some gusty winds and some heavy rain, and then the New England states will be impacted by this particular storm. Want to mention that Florida is not being impacted by this storm, nor is any of the Gulf Coast states as well. So this is going to be a storm that may very well be named, but it's going to be a rainmaker. We could be looking at some flash flooding as well. This is what we're looking at on satellite and radar right now. There's that area of low pressure. You can see all of the rain, the heavy rain uh, that is associated with that area of low pressure. A lot of it is offshore at this point, but there is some rain falling in portions of both Eastern, Car Eastern North Carolina and Eastern South Carolina as well. And I'm gonna put this in motion over the next two days and you can watch where it's headed. So we're looking at the area of low pressure moving a little bit farther off the coastline there, and it's going to start to make its way off to the north. And that's when we're going to see some gusty winds, especially in the outer banks there, some heavy rain at times, uh, but the heaviest of the rain will likely stay offshore with this system. But in spots where we see heavy rain kind of move over the same areas, that's where we'll be looking at the chance for some flash flooding. So this is Friday morning, and I believe this goes out till Friday afternoon. There it is, and some of that heavy rain will be making its way into our New England states. After that, you see that cold front that's making its way through the Midwest near Chicago. That one's going to come in and kind of push all of this offshore eventually over the weekend. But if this storm becomes named, like Daisy said, it would be named Faye because we already had Dolly and Edward, both short-lived short storms, but they did happen over the past couple of weeks. Now we're on to our F name storm, which is Faye, and that would be the name given to this particular storm if it develops. But Daisy, you know, this storm has a lot of things going for it, a lot of those factors that we look at when we talk about tropical storm development and one of those is weaker winds which is our topic for today yes just a reminder for everybody here in the comments so reminder we will be answering your questions using if you guys use the hashtag hey daisy or hashtag hey amanda i'll be looking for them while amanda talks about today's topic which is what is wind shear and how it affects hurricanes amanda you guys have been doing these interesting topics for a few weeks now while things remain relatively quiet so i am very excited to hear about this yeah, so wind shear is one factor that we look at when we talk about forecasting where tropical storms are going and how strong tropical storms 
are going to get. It's a term that we use a lot when we talk about tropical cyclones, and some of you may know what it means, especially if you live out in portions of the central plains. They use this term a lot because when we talk about wind shear, we talk about it for hurricanes, but we also talk about wind shear forecasting severe weather as well. But all wind shear is, is the change of wind speed and or the direction, the wind direction with height. So from the surface all the way to the upper levels of the atmosphere. If you have a change in any kind of the wind speed, sometimes we have slower winds at the surface and really fast winds up in the upper levels of the atmosphere or a change in wind direction. Sometimes at the surface, our winds are coming in out of the south. But in the upper levels of the atmosphere, if those winds are coming in out of the different direction, that's also wind shear. So it could be a combination of both as well. But wind shear in terms of tropical cyclones, it can actually hinder further tropical development or even weaken a storm entirely, depending on the strength of the storm. So when we talk about a weaker storm, a weaker storm is going to be impacted more by wind shear than a more mature storm. So if we have wind shear coming in out of, uh, in this particular case here, the southwesterly direction, what is going to happen is the cloud tops are actually going to be shoved in the northeast direction because those winds are in the upper levels of the atmosphere and they are kind of shearing the storm apart, wind shear. But these are pretty strong upper level winds and they just don't allow the storm to get very well organized. And this is looking at it from a vertical perspective. So you can see those winds coming in from the southeast or whatever the direction may be here. Uh, but it is going to push the top of the storm in that direction, the opposite direction of where those winds are coming from. And it's going to tilt the storm. And we don't like that because the low level center of the storm, that would be exposed and it doesn't allow the winds to kind of wrap around the center to get to a more mature state. But when we talk about a more mature storm, these storms have a better chance at holding together because they kind of have their own little environment already going. They are uh, sustaining themselves at this point. So it's harder for wind shear to impact a stronger, well-going storm. But it does happen. If the upper level winds are strong enough, if that wind shear is strong enough, we're still going to see that storm shear just a little bit. So it weakens, but it may not dissipate entirely like it does, like it could happen with a easier, with a weaker storm. So there again is the vertical picture of what happens when we talk about wind shear with a more mature storm. We still see the tilting of the storm there, but the low level center is more protected by the surrounding circulation. But it could still weaken the storm. It just might not dissipate it entirely, depending on how strong that wind shear is. But certainly something uh, that we look at for every single storm, we look at what the wind shear is doing in the path of this storm. Where the storm is forecast to go, we look at the wind shear in that path because that's going to tell us whether a storm could be getting stronger or it could stay the same strength or potentially even weaken as well, Daisy. So kind of a, a cool little explanation there for you on wind shear. I know we use that term a lot, especially during you know hurricane season and when we talk about a specific storm we may see oh we may say that there's strong winds in this area strong wind shear and that's not good for the storm but that's a little bit deeper of a dive into wind shear for everyone <laughs>